Blessings, blessings chosen ones. I want to bring you all this word. This is day three of wilderness season. So yesterday I named it, entitled it, Walk in It. So I told you all, the Holy Spirit led me to Peter, 1 Peter and 2 Peter. So we are going to continue reading on Peter in the name of Jesus. And this is just to prepare you for your walk, excuse me, in the wilderness in the name of Jesus. This is to prepare you for things that you must do when you are walking in the wilderness, things that you must be alert of in the name of Jesus, things that you must be aware of, things that is going to help you prepare I'm sorry, prepare for whatever God has called you to do in the name of Jesus. If you are new to the channel, my name is Latoya T. Wolford. I am an author and a life coach and a speaker. And I welcome you to this channel. I welcome you to this video in Jesus' name. Okay, you all. So I am going to start at today at 1 Peter 3, starting at verse 13. And the title is Suffering for Right and Wrong. And it says, And who is he who will harm you if you become followers, followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for your hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile you good conduct in Christ, the vow who I'm sorry, those who revile your con good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for evil in the name of Jesus. Okay, you all. So what I want to say about this word is, oh my goodness, I have a lot of testimonies on this word right here in the name of Jesus. You must know that whatever you go through, even if somebody harm you, even if somebody misuse you, you are supposed to keep walking in the light in Jesus name. You are supposed to keep walking with God in the name of Jesus. Meaning that, as I said in the last video from yesterday, you do not conform to the patterns of this world in the name of Jesus. Let the evildoers do what they do best and be evil in the name of Jesus. You do not follow what they are doing because when you do your good works, your good works is seen. That is going to make them ashamed in the name of Jesus. That is what Peter is saying. They are going to be ashamed. Let me read this sentence again. Having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. They are going to be ashamed. So don't even trip. Don't even worry about it. You all just continue to walk in the wilderness because I want to let you all know Yes, you will be walking in the wilderness and you can be walking in the wilderness and you will be having all these problems. Everything will be going on with you while you are walking in the wilderness in the name of Jesus. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the spirit. This is in um, verses 18. It is titled Christ's Sufferings and Ours, who formerly, I'm sorry, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. This is Jesus now, you all, Peter is talking about. Even though they did Jesus Christ wrong, that did not make him stop doing nothing that God had called him to do. He still went and preached the gospel in the prison with them other, all them different kinds of spirits, you all. Spirits that we deal with every day, that we deal with on a daily basis. Jesus still did what he did. He did not turn down nobody, you all. So why would we turn down somebody in the name of Jesus? 
Jesus didn't do it, so we can't do it. Remember, we are walking with Jesus. Jesus lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us in the name of Jesus. So therefore, we are to imitate Jesus' walk in this world in the name of Jesus. Okay, you all. It says, who formerly were disobedient when, when once the divine long sufferings waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared in which a few, that is, eight souls were saved through water. There is also an an answer type, which now saves us baptism, not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authority and powers having been made subject to him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. You all hear this through all his long suffering. Jesus still went out and did what he had to do in the name of Jesus. He still went out and was obedient to God's word and what God told him to do. That is the way we are supposed to be. So whatever God is telling you to do, you need to do it. You need to do it in the name of Jesus. Do not give up on it. You still need to do your calling in the name of Jesus. And another thing, it ain't going to go away. If God called you to it, he going he gonna to make sure you do it. You going to feel it. It's going to be in your conscience every day, every day, every day, every day, repeatedly until you do it, till you start the process, till you start doing it in the name of Jesus. Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind for he has suffered in the flesh, has ceased from sin that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. So even though Jesus Christ walked in the flesh, he did not live in the flesh for men, you all. He lived for God. As I keep constantly, repeatedly saying, we must live for God in the name of Jesus. We walk with God. We are not like the world. We are different from the world. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dispensation, dispensation speaking evil of you, they will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Hmm. You all. So you all hear this. We are going to be judged because we are in the flesh. But because people judge you, that does not mean anything. Remember that God is the only one that can judge us. So when other people judge you, do not let that get you down. Do not worry about that. In the name of Jesus, I just put up a, a mini video earlier talking about this, talking about how people will lie on you and they will lie. And how they would judge you. Who do they think they are? As you all can see in this scripture. This is in 1 Peter 4 verses 4. All the way down to 6. That's why I stopped. I started at 4 all the way down to 6, you all. So you all can go back and look at it and read it. But that's what I was saying. No one can judge you. It does not matter. Can't no one judge you in nothing that you do in the name of Jesus. They do it, but they are not supposed to judge no one in Jesus name. So, you know what? Just continue to let them lie and keep saying, who do they think they are? Because it's funny to me. That's why I made a video because it's funny to me because people think you don't have the sense that God has given you. You don't have the discernment. You don't have the knowledge. You don't have the wisdom in the name of Jesus. It does not matter what age you are. It does not matter what age they are in Jesus name. Sometimes 
you can be younger than them and be stronger and wiser than, than them. Just always remember that, you all. Okay, I'm going to read at 4 verses 7. But the it says, serving for God's glory. But the end of all things is at hand. There be, therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hos hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies in the name of Jesus, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to stop right there, you all. But when we serve, we are serving for God's glory in the name of Jesus. That is why we do what we do. That is why we let people get away with what they get away with or whatever, because we are staying humble and we are here to serve for God's glory. Nobody else's God's glory in the name of Jesus. So let them be who they are. Let them do what they do in the name of Jesus. You just keep walking in faith. You keep walking in your strength and you keep walking in your calling with God in the name of Jesus. Let me backtrack a little bit. Okay. We have to love you all. Remember that we must love no matter what. God says love covers a multitude of sins. So when you love, you are being covered by your sins and everything because you love so hard. You love so much. You love like Jesus Christ. This is what I do. I ask God. I'm like, God, teach me how to love like you. Teach me how to love like Jesus Christ. Put that in your prayer. Add that to your prayer because you want to love like him in the name of Jesus. Love is the second commandment from God. Love your neighbor as yourself in the name of Jesus. So we must love no matter what. And I pray that this word has blessed you all. I will be back tomorrow, God's willing, with a part. What are we on for? Yeah, tomorrow's Thursday, y'all. We already on part four in the name of Jesus. But as I said, I don't know how long this is going to go. I don't know to, I guess, God said stop in the name of Jesus. But it's still more things I need to discuss and talk about with you all in the wilderness. But when God said Peter, read Peter to you all. I had to be obedient and read Peter to you all, which is good because this is something that we needed to hear and we needed to know and and be reassured about in the name of Jesus. So I thank God for this word in Jesus' name. But these are things that you need to know when you are walking in the wilderness with God. You need to know these things because these things are, this is going to help you. You need to know. You really need to know how you are walking with God. You need to practice it, you all, in the name of Jesus, because you are walking past you don't know who every day. So you need to be strong in the Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray that this message has blessed you all, and I will talk to you all in the next video. Blessings to you all. I pray that you all have a beautiful, peaceful day. In Jesus' name, I love you all. I love you all. I love you all. Blessings to you all. Love you all with the love of Christ. Blessings.